What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be making a boom bat beat and we're also going to look at some ways that you can add some more feel and rhythm to your drums as well. So let's jump right into this. Alright guys, so for this one we're going to be using a melody and I went ahead and found this one which seems like it's going to work pretty well so this is what it sounds like. So just a basic melody, it's got that old fashioned vibe to it, sounds like it's on vinyl and stuff like that, so it's going to be perfect for this. Okay, so the sample's originally at like 88 BPM, but we're going to go down to 85, so we went down, I went ahead and turned it down to 85 now, and we're going to go ahead and start messing with this a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the lows out of this melody. Alright, that sounds about right. Okay, so the thing about boom bat beats is the drums are pretty, pretty simple, but you're gonna wanna make sure that the sound selection is tight and everything sounds really good together. That's gonna be the biggest thing. And then we're also gonna look at ways to like make the drums so that they're off grid and they sound more humanistic versus like a trappy sort of style. So let's go ahead and get something down. We're gonna go ahead and pick out like a snare sort of sound first. Okay, so we're gonna end up using this snare right here. But another good choice that I found in here would be something like this. So anything like that where it's a little bit different than your normal trap snare is going to sound really good for these type of beats. So let's uh, let's get right into this bad boy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select all of our snares here and we're going to pull it off the grid just a little bit so that it has a little bit of sway with it. Let's go ahead and find a kick that's gonna work with this as well. All right, so we're gonna use this kick right here. And I'm gonna start by laying this out by hand and then we're gonna go ahead and adjust it, um, the MIDI, once we have that figured out. So let's do this. All right, so we're gonna do something like that. Okay, so we went ahead and offset these well, they were already pretty much offset in the right spot. I just moved them a little bit more so that they all were kind of the same separation apart from the line. And what I'm going to do is just kind of like, I'm going to take this one since it hits right before this kick. I'm going to just drop this velocity down a little bit more. Maybe this one as well. Maybe not as much though. Let's see. Cool. So that worked out pretty well. Now what I'm going to do is actually delete the rest of these and we're just going to use these ones because they're already set up really, really well. So we'll just do that. I'm going to EQ this kick just a little bit. I might take out some of the highs that are in this, but not a lot. So let's see how it sounds. Yeah, so we just cut off just a little bit here, but it made a good difference. So this is without it. And this is with it. All right, I'm thinking next we get a little hi-hat in here. Okay, so this hi-hat right here sounds pretty good. So uh, let's just play something. I'm going to play it on the keyboard again. I'm going to try to catch a groove, and then we'll go ahead and adjust the MIDI just like we did with the kick to see if we need to do anything. So. We're just going to take this first part and we'll end up copying it over because it sounds pretty cohesive together. It sounds really good. The velocities look pretty good. I might turn a couple of these down a little bit more just so there's a little more swag in between the notes. So like one hi-hat will hit louder, one will hit a lot softer. kind of gives it a lot more rhythm to it. It gives it a certain feel to it, which is really cool. So we'll do that and then we'll go ahead and copy these over. All right guys, so I found this uh, hi-hat right here. So we're gonna use this one instead. I think it sounds it sounds almost livey, sort of, but it has a little bit of trap-esque to it, so I think it's gonna sound a lot better. Let's see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're gonna pan that snare ever so slightly to the left here, and looks like the hi-hats are already panned to the right just a little bit. But what I might do with the hi-hats is go into the controls and do a little bit of random pan. Maybe like 10% or something so that it moves just a little bit.
All right, now we need like an open hat kind of a sound to go with this. And then I think we're also gonna find like some kind of like a shaker, tambourine sort of deal. But let's get an open hi-hat just to play like one or two notes every four bars or something like that. We'll see how it goes. And again, we're gonna be playing this on hand. It's really good to catch the groove if you have like a MIDI keyboard. You can even do it on your keyboard at home. Just go ahead and tap in the groove. You can pretty much get it right away without having to adjust the MIDI's very much. So it can be really beneficial to do it all by hand. Super simple. This is sounding pretty good. Let's go ahead and find some sort of like a shaker, shakers or a tambourine or something along those lines that we can just make a nice, um, almost like the hi-hat, but maybe we'll set it off so it's not exactly on the same notes. Um, let's go find something like that. Helps if you get your head into it and you start nodding along with the beat, you get the groove real, real easy if you dig. I like this, but a lot of them are spaced out differently, so it kind of like gets slower and faster in certain areas. So what you can do here if you didn't get the perfect groove by hand is just Go ahead and put everything on the grid. Then once you have everything on the grid, what you can do is just go ahead and move everything the same amount off of it. All right, so that sounds good. The only thing I'm noticing is that it sounds too robotic. It sounds too stale. And as I'm looking at these, I can see that the velocities are pretty much all the same here. And that's a big no-no. So we're setting everything off the grid, but we also want to make sure that the velocities are all different. So we're going to do the same thing like we do with the hi-hats to this. Um, we're going to put some of them down and some of them up just so that they're not all staying at the same exact velocity. That's going to help make it feel like a human's actually playing the instrument and it's not just a trappy robotic more sound so we're gonna play with that a little bit okay so this is sounding a lot better now we gotta adjust the overall volume turn it up a little bit the next thing I want to do is go ahead and find some like staticky noise um, you could use certain plugins to do this but I think I'm gonna find like a texture from one of the sample packs that I have and just put it so that it gives it more of that old school vibe as well because I, I really like how that sounds and I definitely don't have to do this by any means but I'm just gonna do that for the sake of this so we're gonna go for something like this right here just gives it a little bit of a scratchy vibe to it I'm gonna make sure to cut the lows out of that as well just in case so it's not interfering with our kick and then the bass that we're going to be adding in a little bit Cool, and then before we go ahead and lay down the bass line, we can play with the octaves and the um, transposition of our sample as well to see if we want it to be up, down, or anywhere in between. So let's, I'm gonna play with that really quick and make sure this is how I like it. Okay, I like it right around negative three. I think that sounds really good. And then one thing we can do is when we're gonna be switching up this beat, we can take this same exact thing here, maybe make it a different color. And then instead of going down negative three, we'll go up 12 from this. So that's gonna be nine. And what we'll actually do is we're gonna make a duplicate track. And for this one, we can put a couple more plugins and things on it just to spice it up a little bit more. I'm gonna put an RC20 on it first. We're gonna chop out some of the highs too because it's a little harsh, let's see. Throw a little bit of reverb on there as well. I'm also gonna throw a cassette on here too. I know that's kind of crazy. We're using a lot of these uh, vinyl distortion plugins, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a certain preset in here. It's called Mellow My Harsh.
Okay, so now we're gonna finish off by doing the base. You could use an 808 for this if you wanted to. Um, that'll work perfectly fine if you find the right kind of an 808, maybe not a spins, but then again, you can make the spins work in pretty much any case. But I'm gonna use some sort of like a bass guitar plugin that I have. I'm gonna use the Scarvy Rickenbacker bass here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, our melody right here, and drag it onto the 808. And we're gonna press harmonize it so that maybe we can find some of the notes that the 808's gonna rest on to make our life a little bit easier. Or the bass, not the 808. All right, this isn't really helping much, so we might just have to do this from scratch. That's completely fine. Luckily, it's only two different notes, so I think this is the pattern right here. We're gonna copy this over and listen to it a few times. All right, so what I ended up doing, it made it really easy to figure it out, was I ended up taking these ones and putting them up an octave higher so that I could hear more of the tone from the bass. And then I took this melody, the one that we rose up an octave from the other one, so that we could hear more of the tones in the bass of the notes that are playing here. So now when you listen to them together, you can definitely tell that it's hitting the right notes. <laughs> Now that we got the notes down, we can go ahead and figure out the pattern it's going to be. Let's go ahead and copy the kick notes in here as well so that we can kind of get them offset with the 808 here. In fact, we can actually just take the notes here, turn them on, and then we can put them like that. That'll work. We're going to do some sort of like a little bit of like a little roll here, like da 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 da, something like that. Um, Let's go ahead and we want to make sure that all these notes are going to be in the right scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that melody and do the same thing again. Let's pull it down here. We'll just, we'll stick it in this spot now. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of sidechain compression um, on the melodies with the kick so that way it kind of ducks it just a little bit when the kick hits So we're gonna grab a compressor put the side chain on get the audio from the kick And uh, we're gonna play with some of these values right here All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up this beat. We're going to take a listen to this on the outro, but I just want to say thank you for watching this all the way to the end. Make sure to smash that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new here because we're dropping dope tutorials like this all the dang time, and you're not going to want to miss out on them. And besides that, guys, if you want to show some support to the channel, you can go ahead and grab my drum kit, which is in the link below if you haven't got that already. Also, if you want to set up like a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with me, take a look at that. I also have a link for that in the description below so that we can work one-on-one -on -one together and we can get you through any humps you may be in or just get you to that next level overall. But without any further ado, let's take a listen to this beat.